guys, welcome back. I got to tell you, I have just stepped outside of the tractor for a moment just to check the weather because we're on route to the sawmill, but it was bright and sunny out a minute ago and now we're into this darkness. So I think a storm is either about to hit us or about to pass by us. But regardless, I'm gonna take a moment and tell you what we're up to today, just in case that downpour or whatever else is up there in the sky is about to hit us. Right here behind you, before it sort of jumped out of position, what we had was three nicely placed uh, IBC cages that were tied down together. And you guys can see here, it doesn't really look too uh, well secured at this moment. It's there, but it's just there. We got those IBC cages attached to the front end loader of the tractor. We're gonna take that out to the sawmill, which is where I'm headed, in order to cut up the slab wood. The slab wood is all the extra pieces from the sawmill that I don't use, at least not for lumber. I'm going to put those into the IBC cages by hopefully using the forks on the tractor to lift the wood up. Then the chainsaw will cut it into pieces, then they will fall due to gravity into those IBC cages and I will not have to touch it like I normally do. That's the idea. Whether we'll get to that in the next hour or two is to be seen. Let's go back in the tractor just in case this, head, this uh, storm hits us. We'll make our way to the sawmill and let's just hope we get this done. Here we go. That wasn't a wasp again. You guys see where that thing went? Little on edge. If you guys haven't been here before, I got stung quite a few times, not all that long ago, out here at the sawmill. And I've sort of been stepping on eggshells, no pun intended, recently because I don't want to get stung again. They sort of swarmed me, and it was my own fault kind of moved around their nest a bit without knowing it and sure enough they didn't like that and they told me about it so hopefully they're not floating around in this wood pile or back under there again anyways i haven't been stung in this second so we'll keep going i got the tractor here let's get the ibc cages down and you guys can see exactly what i was talking about here's the slab wood we're going to get the forks we're going to slide under there and lift it off of there and then position them over top those ibc cages which i'll put into position sort of one side by side by side We'll cut them up into 16 inch pieces for my wood stove and hopefully this goes without a hitch. I think the weather might throw a wrench in there, but hey, we'll work with it. Normally what I would do, just for those of you who haven't seen this in operation, normally what I would do with the slab rack is basically leave it where it sits, get out the chainsaw and just cut it in between these pieces, these pieces, and I would end up with my 16 inch pieces, but then I'd have to use my hands and obviously throw it into the IBC cages to move it around. I want to eliminate that throwing, that manual work, and so we're going to try something different here today. I'm not exactly an old dog, at least I don't feel like it, and so I'm going to try to learn a new trick here. Here we go. All right, that's uh, a bit of a sketchy endeavor there. Let's get away from that. Actually, it's all strapped together, so it's not too bad. down here and I can feel the rain coming sort of the way of the world right you just get everything set up and then the rain hits you Okay, I'm gonna set you guys down. Let's get this set up side by side by side. I just need enough room to move the tractor and we'll get to it. Gotcha. Mm. 
You guys hear that? That's probably no good. Oh, better work quick. Well guys, we got it in a position and as you can see it was a little narrow there. I broke broke the ends off some of the slabs just a little bit just to make it fit. Obviously uh, the worst has happened. That tends to be how jobs go around here. You get all set up and then it starts to rain or whatever. I'm going to take a little break inside the tractor for just a few minutes and see if it quits. Uh, if it keeps raining I'm just going to say forget it and just keep going at it here. Might as well. I'm not going to melt. What we've got here is obviously uh, a really big pile and the forks picked it up no problem and all that sort of stuff these are 42 inch forks here i think in this case if i had 48 inch forks it would have been all the better but i did get it all picked up nonetheless well that's probably a good opportunity for me to uh sort of make a uh, uh, an intersect in this video sort of cut her off. I think I'm getting out of here. That was really close I'm in the middle of some trees and I don't think it's a good place to be. See you guys in a bit Well guys if there's any consolation of this heavy rain we're getting it's the tractors getting a bath Now if you've ever wondered why I like having a tractor cab on my way out here today I thought it was gonna be a fine afternoon got part way out here You guys saw me get out of the tractor look around it looked bad Having the tractor cab allows me to escape somewhere, turn the music on, turn the air conditioning on, or heat if it's in the winter, and just sort of hang out and be safe from the elements. Same thing goes for my shack back behind you. You guys probably can't see it through the rain, but that's my sawmill shack. Having that is really convenient when you're halfway through some cutting and the rain starts falling or snow or sleet or whatever it might be. So you guys can hang out and, you know, take it all in. Let's hang out a bit longer and then we'll see where we end up. Well guys, it sure doesn't seem like the storm's gonna let up here anytime soon. I just had a look at the radar and it looks like it's sweeping through the area. We'll make the best of it. One of the things that I did before coming out here to do the slab wood and cut it all up was I actually made something. And I made a little care package for my bee friends. What this is, is an idea I got from one of you guys. And I took a paper bag and I more or less just filled it with some newspaper. Threw a little dark spot on the bottom to represent the hole where the bees would go in. And I made myself a paper wasp nest, a fake one. Now I had some of these on order, they just haven't come in yet, and I'm talking the commercial ones. So I took your idea, so thank you for those of you who suggested this. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna string this up high here and try not to be scared by it next time I walk into the shack and forget that I put it there. So let's put this up here somewhere. And the best part of all is I haven't seen any wasps lately. So hopefully that means they haven't set up their nest before I get this one up. You guys see up there? I'm gonna try to run a rope up there somewhere. I'm just not that great at it some days. is up you guys can get a good look at that see it up there now the next question becomes this do i take a run for it and try to get back to the house which is quite a ways from here or do i just sort of hang out here trying to weigh my weigh my uh 
weigh my pros and cons here. I don't know, I guess we'll wait a few more minutes. All right, guys, well, I think the thunder and lightning is moving on, and so that's a good thing. Maybe not. Anyways, I guess I'm heading back to the tractor. Um, yeah, I'll tell you about this in a minute. I'm an optimist, as you can tell, but no matter how optimistic you are, you're probably not gonna change the weather's mind. Get in here. Okay. All right, so we wait. Okay, our little camp out there in the tractor is uh, getting a bit old, as you guys can imagine. I've been in there for quite a while, about half hour, and I figured it was probably safer in the tractor than hanging out underneath the metal roof on that nice, big, tall sawmill shack. Anyways, things are blowing over. It is getting brighter out, so we'll call that a good wash, and that's the end of it. I was sitting in there sort of contemplating life and trying to figure out what I was going to do when the, when the rain quit. And I had a look at the setup from the tractor seat and I thought to myself, gee, that's not really that safe. And it's not really that much more of an advantage over what I had previously where the wood was in that rack over there. I think I'm going to actually put the wood back in the rack and cut it and then just hand throw it into these, into these IBC cages. Because if you guys can imagine, you see where I'm standing here, and then I gotta have a then I gotta have a chainsaw in my hand. Well, having the chainsaw up nice and high like that puts it relatively close to my face. If for whatever reason we were to get kicked back, I don't like to work above my head with a chainsaw, and I'm certainly not going to be standing on a ladder in order to cut this. And so I think at this point, I'm gonna wave the white flag. I'm gonna throw in the towel, put it back where it was, cut it in the rack, hand throw it into these IBC cages, and call it good. Maybe down the road what I'll do, I'll get some sort of a platform built, maybe over there somewhere so I have a solid footing, and then I can cut it like this. But for now, this is not a safe situation. It's funny, the lightning and thunder sort of kicks in on that word safe situation. But for this, this is not a safe situation, so I'm gonna not do it, and so let's put it back where it was. We'll wrap this up. Hopefully that thunder's gone. Here we go. Oh! Mm -hmm. 
Well, sounds like round two of the thunder and lightning is probably on the horizon, so I better get to work here. You guys could see that wasn't overly taxing. It basically, you just cut in between these two by fours here and you get about a 16 inch piece. Now I'm just gonna throw them in the IVC cages and call it good. There are gonna be the odd piece that fell and I never ended up cutting it. I'll just set that off the side, get it after. But I think this is easier. It's definitely safer. I don't have pieces sort of above my head and dangling everywhere and I'm not running the chainsaw at a peculiar angle. And so I think this is the way to go. And I guess a little bit of exercise won't hurt me. Although if you do firewood to uh, eat anything, you probably know that it is already tons of exercise. Some of you guys have mentioned, and I just haven't got around to it, putting pieces of, pieces of wood along here so the wood doesn't fall in the bottom of the rack. Definitely something I'm going to do. It's not... Uh, Hasn't hit the top of the to-do list yet. Well guys, the sun came out, so that's probably a sign it's quitting time. As you guys can see, we got rid of all the wood here. That took me probably about 10 minutes to cut it with my chainsaw. And this chainsaw, by the way, is a Husky 555 Auto-Tune. About 10 minutes to cut it, and that wasn't that big of a challenge. As you guys saw, I cut from both sides. That's just because the bar is only 20 inches long, and I can't quite get through the whole pile in a single pass. So I make one cut here, go to the other side, and just finish it off. 10 minutes there, probably took me about 25 minutes to load the IVC cages, maybe a little bit less. You can see here that pile filled one and a half IVC cages and that's loose filled. I think the wood it made is, is quite good, especially if you have an outdoor uh, wood boiler or maybe you uh, want to put, put this into your wood stove like I'm going to or maybe you're going to use it for campfire wood. It's great size and <clears throat> as you guys can see it's, uh, it's definitely not just waste, right? Might as well use it. So that's just about it for me here today. 
that's sort of a lesson in going back to what you know and going back to what's safe, even though you think the other idea might be faster. I probably could have made that other idea I had work where I lifted up the wood and I could probably cut it. It would fall right into the IBC cages, but I don't think it was safe. And so I went back to what I know is safe, which is this. And it didn't turn out to be all that bad. I got it done pretty quickly. So I think I'll stick to this for now. If you're interested in learning more about this slab rack or off cut rack, as I call it, I have a video out on this. I'll be sure to put a link to it in the, uh, in the description and I'll put, a, uh, I'll put the video as well in a playlist. So be sure to check that out. If you have any questions about this at all, be sure to ask me down below. Hopefully you guys come back next time. We're always out doing stuff like this. And well, if we're not doing this, then we're doing stuff like that, or maybe we're loading logs or cutting logs or something of that sort. So I hope you guys join us for that and welcome to the channel if you're brand new. If not, welcome back and guys, I'll see you all next time. Mm -hmm.